that he talks to her every single day and the girls. You guys, that's crazy. So today we're gonna be talking about the things that Cheryl Lynn Cattle said about Chris Watts. She spent a lot of time with Chris Watts. She has visited him for five hours at a time, multiple times, wrote him, and was talking to him twice a week there for a while. So she knows a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And today I'm gonna be telling you guys things that she has said about him and how she feels. Please know that this video is only to report on the news and for entertainment purposes only. Please be kind to everyone, be kind in the comment section, and just be kind to everyone in general. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning <laughs> subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? I hope you are all having an amazing day. I got some exciting things coming up in my life. I'm going to an appointment tomorrow to get this photo ju rejuvenation, I think that's what it's called, done on my face for my melasma. So y'all stay tuned on that. I'm gonna be taking you guys through the process. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing this that here or on my second channel, Casually Christina, but it's coming up, I'm excited. So today we're gonna be talking about Cheryl Lynn Cattle. She is the author of the book of Chris Watts with the whole letters situation. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have been second guessing reading the book and I'll tell you guys why. And I know that y'all are gonna think I'm a little kooky and this is a little eerie, but there's been some strange things going on in my house ever since I started diving deeper into this Chris Watts case. Literally, like I, like some sort of, ooh, I don't even wanna let it come out of my mouth because it gives me chills thinking about it. Like a, Just say I've been doing a lot of praying. And to all of my prayer warriors out there, say a prayer for me, pray over my home, all of that, because something really weird is happening or going on or in here. So I'm second guessing it. I don't know if that means that I should, that there's something trying to stop me from digging into this and talking about this, or if that means that I should stop but I'm praying about it and really thinking about it. Other than that though, I am gonna tell you guys, there is a guy on YouTube, his channel name is Scott Reich, I believe his name. He is a defense attorney or he was a defense attorney and he does a lot of videos from his perspective as an attorney's perspective. Like I do my videos as an ex-con perspective. If you guys don't already know me, hi, my name is Christina. Whenever I was 21, I was sentenced to three years prison in the state of Florida. So I have been to prison and so I have a perspective from a criminal's standpoint or an ex-criminal or da 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 da. So I really like listening to him on a lot of things and what he did was he reached out to Sherilyn Cattle and got her on for an interview talking about the book. Now this video was an hour and a half long and they talked about so many things and she did not hold back but it's an hour and a half. Not a lot of us have an hour and a half. It took me a couple uh a couple breaks in the middle to listen to it. I just listened to it. But I wanted to um, touch on some keynotes or some things that she talked about as in dealing with Chris Watts one-on-one -on -one now that he is self-proclaimed changed. Okay, so I wanna just bring up a couple points. One of the things that she said about him that I thought was very interesting, well, first let me tell you guys that she is very neutral in the situation, okay? Cheryl Lynn Cattle what number one was not in a relationship with him. She was just writing him. She's actually a writer. Okay. And I don't think she talks to him anymore. That's the way she made it sound in here that this was the purpose was the book. And he agreed all of that there and the other, she's very neutral. Okay. She's not taking up for him. She's not on his side. She agrees. He is exactly where he should be. And he's, you know, whatever, okay? So she is not doing this as a protection to him. She also mentioned 
that he is not allowed to receive any money. And a lot of you guys told me that. You told me that there was some sort of hold on him or he was sued by the family and that Chris Watts was not allowed to receive any money. But I was just thinking, okay, well, if she gets the book in her name, she can get the money and then like put money on his books. But he's not allowed to have any money. And as a person that has been in prison and I realize how helpful money can be, and how much easier it can make your time. Now don't now, now don't get me wrong. You can have a hundred bucks a, a month. I think you can get a hundred bucks a week there. hundred bucks a month. I want to say it's a hundred bucks a week. You can have as much money as you want in your prison account. Somebody can go drop a million dollars in your prison account. But they'll only release here in Florida. I don't know about where y'all live. They'll only release a certain amount to you. Like you can't go up to the store and buy $500 worth of stuff. I think it's a hundred dollars a week think it is not sure y'all correct me or let me know what it's like where you're from so but having money in your account while you're in prison does make your stay a little less painful I won't say like it's easy nothing's gonna make it easy and especially if your name is Chris Watts Ooh, nothing honey's gonna make it easy so I thought that, that was interesting she said he cannot get any money so he is not getting any proceeds from this she said what she was doing with the money was of course paying herself back she spent a lot of time and effort on this book. It's taken a lot of time and a lot out of her. She said it really took a lot out of her emotionally to be in the headspace of this. And I can only imagine. She's literally talking to a killer on a regular basis. Then the phone calls, the traveling, you know, all of that stuff. So she pays herself back. She also said she was donating money to multiple different organizations. And I believe she said that she was going to be giving some money to Shanann's family. So it's not this whole thing, I'm gonna get completely rich and you know, that's whatever I'm gonna use him. She, according to her words, so it's alleged, according to her words, she is trying to do positive things with this money as well as pay herself back. So I thought that that was very good. So let's get it, now that you guys kinda have a basis of what the author's character is and what her proclaimed intentions were, let's talk about some of the things that she said about Chris, okay. She said that Chris had pictures of his family in the cell. I think a lot of you guys know that. Y'all have heard that, that he had pictures in there. He's going around saying he's still a dad and all of that. And people were mad about it. The public, guards, other inmates, people were in an uproar. I know some of y'all were mad about it. Like, why should he be allowed to have photos of the people that he took their lives, right? And she said what really bothered her was that Chris said to her, I don't know why people would want to hurt me like that by taking the pictures from him. And she said, like, it was completely bizarre to her. She said it was like Chris is absolutely clueless or he's out of touch with reality. Like, she was thinking like, or I don't know if she said it or she was thinking it, but she said that she was like, you know, Chris, you don't know why people would want to hurt you what about the people that you hurt? You know what I'm saying? So she's saying that he, like literally his response to that was, I don't know why people would want to hurt me like that. Well, because, okay, we're going to go on. <laughs> we're going to go on. Another thing that I thought that she said was interesting, I don't know if you know this, but she said Nicole. And Nicole is the woman that was having an affair with Chris while Chris was with his wife, Shanann, okay? She said Nicole has disappeared off the face of the earth. Nobody knows where she is. Nobody knows, you know, any of that. Or maybe people do, but we don't know. The public don't know. She said she did not go into protective custody, though. She did not. She said that she has probably changed her looks and her name and gone off grid somewhere. So... That is very interesting, like she has disappeared. All of this has really come back on her too to the point that she's had to change her name and her hair. This is all alleged, I don't know, this is all alleged, but that's what she said. This is another interesting thing that she said about Chris. She said that Chris almost kind of has a dark force around him. And I believe it. She said that Chris planned this for three or four weeks. Okay, this was planned out. He knew what he was gonna do. He had the intentions of doing this. And I, we've talked about this before, but she said that he told her this. She also said that Chris said that he wanted to be with Nicole so badly. 
so badly that he felt this dark force around him. He was almost obsessed with Nicole and being with her. The thought of being with her drove him mad. Chris said that Nicole was dark. There was something about her that was dark and that he felt that when he was around her. She also said that Chris has things of, that he knows about Nicole or things that happened while he was with Nicole that he will never speak about. That he said that horribly dark things went on at her house when he was with her. Creeping me out, you guys. I'm telling you guys it's creeping me out. This is all alleged, of course. This is all word of mouth. This does not mean this is true. This does not mean this is facts. And I will leave this video, as always, guys, that video that I, I'm pulling all this from, down in the description box so you guys can go and watch it yourself. She also said that Chris is still very, very protective of Nicole and that he's still very much in love with her and would love to be with her, even though all of the dark stuff that happened. Now, she said he does talk about his relationship with Nicole in the letters, which will be in this book or is in the book. The book was supposed to be released on Monday, October 7th, but there are things that he will never speak of. Creepy, you guys, very creepy. She said that Chris is very delusional in a lot of ways, that he's out of touch with reality, that the things that he says and he thinks just like don't make logical sense, you know? She said that immediately after Chris met Nicole, he was planning to do what he did. And his plan was first Shanann and then later the girls. And she was even like thinking like, like how, like how, and then he, and then he was gonna start over. So it was first Shanann, Later, he would take care of the girls and then he would start his life over with Nicole. And she's just like, you know, how do you think that you're going to be able to commit these crimes and then just start over like it's nothing? Like she's like, he's completely delusional and, and out of touch with reality to think this. She also talked a lot about the fact that Chris was kind of always controlled his whole life. Like something was always controlled with him. Like he you know, was in a controlling relationship with Shanann, his wife. And when I say controlling relationship with Shanann, that doesn't mean that that's a necessarily terrible thing. Typically in all relationships, you have a more dominant person and a more submissive person. Sometimes it's the woman that's dominant. Sometimes it's the man that's dominant. In my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion. It's not unhealthy unless it's unhealthy, right? Unless one person feels like they can't do things because they're scared or unless there's some sort of verbal or whatever, any kind of abuse going on, then it's unhealthy. I don't know, but all I know is that Cheryl Lynn said that all growing up, while he Chris Watts was growing up, he had been controlled by like his parents. Now, like I said, this is all alleged. I don't know if this is really true or not. This is just what she said or around about the way that she said it was that even his mom controlled her his thoughts that he would, she would ask him, his mom would ask him all the time, like, what are you thinking? She wanted to know what he was thinking. And that in the letters, he speaks about the fact that he always felt like his mom was so concerned with Chris not loving his dad more than her. She wanted to be the one that was loved absolutely the most to the point that she controlled even the way he thought. And so therefore, when he went from growing up to then being in a relationship with Shanann, that he was completely controlled, 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 then like, you know, he's basically felt like he had his thoughts and his life controlled by somebody else his whole entire life. And now he will have his life controlled by the Department of Corrections for the rest of his life. So I thought that that was a little bizarre and interesting. I don't know if you guys know this, but Chris Watts' mom is supposedly releasing a book too, talking about him as a child and all of these different things, so. I don't know, the whole thing kind of gives me the creeps nowadays, so the whole situation is really eerie to me lately. I don't know, it's giving me a really weird vibe. Miss Sherilyn Cattle asked him, why did you lie to the FBI? Cause see, you saw a few videos a little bit back. I listened to those FBI tapes. They were hours and hours and hours. I was cleaning the house, cleaning out the refrigerator, had my headphones on, listening to those tapes and really paying attention. He said, the reason why he lied to the FBI during that interview was because they surprised him. They just popped up, wanted to do an interview, and then they told him that that interview would never go anywhere, that it was just between him and them. And then now it's all over the place. But see, I find that bizarre because 
he didn't know that it was going to get spread. You know, while he was lying, he didn't know if they were being honest or not, which they obviously were not, or I don't know if they got leaked. I'm not sure. Alleged, alleged for entertainment purposes only. I don't know. But I think it's more of to the point of what a lot of you guys have said, the fact of maybe there's a bit of narcissism there and he's just always trying to do what he thinks the person in front of him wants him to do, so he puts on that show. So I don't know, all alleged, all speculation, that's what it is. He also said that the reason why he did that interview, because he could have said no, because he wanted to take the opportunity to clear Shanann's name. You want to know something else? He says that he talks to Shanann in his cell, that he talks to her every single day in the girls. You guys, that's crazy. Another thing that was interesting is, I don't know if y'all know this, but Chris never got a real attorney. I'm not saying that a public defender is a fake attorney, but you guys know what I mean. He never got a hired attorney. By the way, shout out to my public uh, defenders out there and my state's attorneys out there and everybody that works hard and has to deal with these types of cases and have a lot of pressure on your back. Shout out to y'all. But he said that he never got one. He said that he was depending on his family that his family told him that they were gonna get him an attorney, but they never did, and that he ended up being okay with his public defender because he said they were nice to him. And he was so used to, at that point, everybody being so rude to him and mean to him that he was just so happy that they were nice to him and they seemed to believe in him and they acted like they wanted to help him, so he just stuck with his public defender. Now, as I'm wrapping this up, I thought I would tell you guys that she says Chris gets dozens of letters every single day, okay, from people, women, all kinds of people, postcards, all kinds of stuff. He even get has been getting this like postcard or was getting this postcard from Hawaii, and he in his mind believes that it's Nicole sending him messages in code. She says, Miss Sherilyn Cattle says that he's delusional, okay, that he's, she doesn't understand why he thinks like this, but Chris says, that he gets these postcards from someone in Hawaii that keeps talking about banana bread. So the person is, mess is sending them him postcards talking about banana bread, and in Chris's mind, it's Nicole, and that's banana bread is code for something, and he's trying to figure it out. Like he is I'm telling you guys, when you're in prison, you got a lot of time to think, and your mind will go all kinds of which ways. She also said that people that write him, some of them minister to him, some of them are in love with him. She said he even has this one woman that is kind of like his girlfriend or is his girlfriend, okay? And that this woman does not like her, Miss Sherilyn Cattle. She is so mad at her for putting out those letters as the book. She did not want Sherilyn to do that. As a matter of fact, she tried to stop Miss Cattle from putting the book out, but Miss Cattle already had a letter from Chris saying that it was okay and she could release it and all that. So there was no going back after she'd put in all that time, all that work and all of that. But because this new woman is in love with Chris, she's trying to protect him. She said this woman comes to Chris's defense like a wife would. So, Y'all tell me what y'all think about that. <laughs> Alrighty, so that about wraps all that up for the interview that was an hour and a half long. Like I said, y'all go and check out Mr. Scott's YouTube channel. I will leave that video linked down below if you guys wanna go and watch it and dive in deeper. Have any of y'all purchased the book? Are you gonna purchase the book? What do y'all think about everything? I just really hope that this book does some good for somebody. I hope that if there are people that are out there that maybe are having these thoughts every now and then, you know, I don't know, my brain doesn't operate like that, you know, but if, if somebody else's does, maybe this will help somebody. I hope that it is able to help somebody, okay? Chris ain't getting none of the money for it. So let's just hope and all pray that it does help somebody. Please also remember this video is for entertainment purposes only and just to report on the news and have healthy conversations between me and y'all and each other. Please, as always, don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
Search for